In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to shoot straight into a computer. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today is a little bit different. I'm, uh, I'm remaking a video that I made a while back on shooting tethered and uh, it's a really popular video, but my processes have changed and I think I, think I have a better process now. And if I'm honest, it really wasn't my strongest video at explaining how this works and how you do it. So uh, this is my second attempt and hopefully it's a, hopefully it's a better, um, it's more effective at uh, showing you how to do this. Uh, shooting tethered, if you don't know what that is, is when you connect your camera uh, onto a computer of some sort. Um, and uh, there's a couple of reasons why you want to do this. The main one, of course, is that when you are shooting into something like a laptop or a desktop, the screen size. And it's a lot easier to figure out if you've missed focus or it just if you need to change anything in the scene, it's, it's, it's very difficult to notice uh, small items in uh, on a tiny little screen like the back of your camera and so you, you're constantly zooming in and out on 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 the back of the screen there but it just makes it easier it makes it more difficult to really just get a, an overall feel for the scene right whereas on a big screen um, you can have a look at the whole scene in one go and if you've got other people with you it's a lot easier to show that on on the, on a bigger screen rather than having everyone sort of you know looking over your shoulder um, so what do you need in order to do this well I'm going to show you how to do this using a USB cable. There are other methods to connect. A lot of wireless systems are coming onto the market now, uh, which are very good. But in order to keep things simple, I'm going to use a USB cable. And if your camera uses a different type of proprietary cable, um, then this should work as well. But the one that I'm going to show you is uh, using a USB. So this is a Teletools uh, cable. It is uh, specially designed for, sh for connecting cameras to computers, but you can use just a generic cable, like a hard drive uh, cable, and it should work fine. Where you may run into problems is where you're getting a cable that's too long. So um, anything beyond uh, three meters, which I think is about nine feet, um, sometimes you might get dropouts. And whereas uh, cables such as th these ones are designed for this sort of thing, and they're just they're really, really reliable. So, but know that you don't need one of these. You can just keep, you have a three meter generic cable and sh it should work fine. Um, the only other thing I will mention as far as accessories is that if you're going to do this a lot, you may consider uh, getting what uh, this thing. This is thing is called a jerk stopper. It's a funny name, but it's made by a company called Tether Tools as well, the, the people that make this cable. And what this is, is uh, it's a little clip that goes uh, near the end of the cable and what this does this is the this is a male um, end of the jerk stopper and this here is if you can see that is the uh, female end and what happens is that when you connect your cable into your camera um, you connect the jerk stopper first and then you uh, then you plug it into the uh, into the back of the camera what this does is that if someone trips over the cable or yanks on this for whatever reason it protects the USB port on your camera. So it's just gonna pull on that rather than the uh, rather than the USB port. If you break your USB port, just from experience, myself and other people that have had this problem, you're in for hundreds of dollars uh, to get that repaired. So uh, if you can get something like this or even just use some gaffer tape or something uh, just to protect the uh, the USB, it's something that is definitely worth doing. Um, but if you wanna if you wanna read up about any of these, I'll just put some, there'll be a link in the description. Uh, so you can just click on that if you're interested in uh, in looking at that. So now, before we go on, uh, I'd like to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel, it'd be really cool if you um, if you uh, did subscribe. Uh, you'll get videos like this, um, just teaching you stuff about photography. So uh, and I make them out regularly, like on a weekly basis. So it'd be great to have you as a subscriber. So if you, if you haven't subscribed, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little no notification bell, and that way you won't miss any videos uh, that um, that come out in the future. So now, what are we going to do here? We're going to plug these uh, into other end of the uh, of the computers, uh, or one, one end into the computer, and then the other end is going to go into the camera, and that's it really. Now, another note that I'll make just quickly: I shoot into a MacBook Pro that is about three years old, but this is the machine that I use when I go onto locations. In my studio, I shoot straight into a 2009 iMac. So it's a really old iMac, but it doesn't serve any other purpose than just shooting tethered. So you don't need the, the, the latest and greatest 
of any computer to be able to do this well. Uh, just get an old uh, an old computer PC, uh, Apple, you know, iMac or something like that, something with a big screen. That's what you want. You want real estate really uh, more than ground power. You don't need a lot of ground power in order to be able to uh, just look at the screens. So, um, so what we'll do now is I'm going to plug this in. We're going to jump into Lightroom and then I'm going to show you how to start a tethered session and then how to capture your images and control your camera from there and everything that you need to do uh, in order to, uh, to shoot straight into a computer. Okay. Okay, so let me show you the setup that I've got here. As you can see, I've got the USB cable plugged straight into the USB port of the camera. And then the other end is going straight into the USB port of the laptop. And I've got the camera here pointed straight at my subject, which is going to be uh, this clock here. Okay, so that's the setup, very simple. And now what we're going to do is we're going to jump into Lightroom and I'm going to show you how to make all of this work. Okay, so here we are inside of Lightroom and something that I forgot to mention before was the problems that I've had in the past where uh, I've had connectivity issues uh, with my camera and Lightroom. Uh, most of those stem from having other applications that are trying to control the camera as well. And doing, I guess, doing a little bit of research, I found that most of those conflicts come from the actual Canon software that ships with my camera. I'm not sure what happens with the with other manufacturers, but I've tried this with every single Canon camera that I own, uh, and it's always been the same. It causes problems. So one thing that I would recommend is just delete that um, those applications. You don't need them anyway because um, Lightroom is going to do everything that you need. Um, uh, the, or in everything that those applications do and you're going to be able to do more as well so my recommendation get rid of it you don't need it um, so we're in Lightroom now and to start a tethered uh, session very very simple you just navigate up to the file menu and go all the way down to where it says tethered capture and then select the start tethered capture just below that and when you do that you're going to get this uh, you're going to present it a um, uh, a dialog box and this box is to really just to organize yourself um, so here is where you type in the name of the of the session I've got tethered test in there um, just to keep it organized below that you've got the naming format of the file and you've got a whole bunch of different um, options that you can do I would recommend doing something like a custom name so that you can you know uh, keep the name meaningful in case you lose the files they're very easy to find you can just do a search for that type of file uh, below that you've got the location of the files where you're going to keep them uh, so you can click in here and you can change the, um, the, the, the folder where you keep your files um, if you if you want them added straight into a collection within Lightroom uh, you can click this box here and then you can just select that this is metadata stuff again uh, to keep uh, files organized and then disable auto advance um, you don't want that disabled you just want to keep that enabled that just means that every time you shoot a photo it's going to come up on the screen so we've got that set up we're going to now click OK and your your um, uh, Lightroom is going to take a little while detecting the camera you can see here no camera detected it's just going to take a little while and then it's going to pick up the camera so uh, in this case this is my camera here and um, and you're going to see a couple of little things in here as well which is uh, the, it's going to allow you to change some of the settings uh, from here right it depends on the camera um, in some cases some cameras have physical uh, fixed dials that obviously you can't change virtually but on the one dx most of this stuff is buttons and digital so you can actually change it um, so to shoot now it's very simple and you've got a couple of options so you can push the actual shutter button on the camera and when you do so okay it's going to take a picture and then the picture will appear uh, straight onto uh, onto the screen on the laptop and and this is the beauty of this system because you can now see the picture in the, I mean there's so much more real estate in there that it allows you to see things that you maybe are not happy with overall in the photo but it also allows you to like you know check in your 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 um, your focus to make sure that you've nailed it you can move around the picture um, it's just really really versatile um, and like I said before at the moment obviously this is way too blue but let me just change the white balance which I can do for, from here let's change it to something uh, let's go to shade um, so that you add a little bit of a warmth to it and we're going to push the button again and as you can see now the um, the, the yeah the photos could just got a different white balance uh, I can also change let's say I want to blur 
the back of the of the clock here i can change that aperture to say 2.8 i can shoot that again and as you can see now we're getting a, a blurry background now the other way that you can fire off the camera you're going to see this big button in here that you can actually fire the camera through the pc which is really really handy if you're doing uh uh, well, if you're doing any sort of photography where the camera is, a, you set the camera up and then it's in a hard to reach place. So rather than have to reach over every time um, and, um, and, and you know, pushing the button, you can actually sit at a desk. If you've got something that's got movement, for example, you can wait till the right moment and then you can just click the button here and I'll show you. Um, let me change, let me change this again to, let's go to, let's go to fluorescent just to show you that there is in fact a difference. So when I click here, you would have heard that uh, it's changing the um, uh, it's changed the white balance there. The, the new photos come up, but you can just fire the camera from over here, which is really really handy. Like I said, if you've got um, a situation where you um, yeah you've got the camera locked up somewhere and you don't want anyone getting anywhere near it, this is a really easy way to um, to fire the camera. And of course, the great thing about this is that you can go straight into editing from here because the file is now in Lightroom. So if I click develop, um, you can go in there and start to develop that straight away. There's no, uh, the, the efficiency there is, is, is uh, a great benefit because you've, you've got um, an art director or someone looking over your shoulder, you can sort of get an idea, give them an idea of what you you think that the photo is going to, uh, is going to look like. So you can go in there and you can change it and and um, and which you can't do on the back of the camera, obviously. So the control that you get by shooting this way is just much, much more efficient because you're uh, you're already uh, in the editing space. That you're in the shooting space, but you're also in the editing space, which can save you a great deal of time and also get an idea whether you've actually nailed the shot or not. So that's it for version two of shooting tethered. I'm hoping it's a better version than the first video that I made. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have, or even if you've got any comments or you need me to explain anything further, that's the place to, uh, the, the place to put the, those comments and questions down there. And uh, yeah, it'd be great to hear from you. So yeah, leave me a note. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button. It should be down there somewhere. I think there's a little one over here. If you click on that, then you'll never miss another one of my videos. Um, and I put these out regularly, usually every week, and there's loads and loads more of them coming. So you, if you don't want to miss out, then click the little button and, and, uh, and you'll be sorted. Anyway, that is all from me. I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.